Hey, Pastor David here. I wanted to answer the question, what do the scriptures teach? Now, this is a big question, but the Bible is the word of God and it's made available for every person to take up and read so that they can live for God. It might be helpful for us to step back and get the big picture. What do the scriptures teach? And I think a a broad answer would be this. The scriptures teach us the story of God's work in his world and how we can live for God in his world. So the scriptures teach us the story of God's work in his world and teach us how we can live for God in his world. I want to give you a cup, a big picture of the story and then that connects to how we can live for God. So the Bible begins with the perspective and the, the assertion that God is the creator of the world, that everything that exists exists because of and by him. He spoke it all into existence, which means he gets to decide what it exists for. He's the one that creates it, and he creates it for a purpose. So God creates Adam and Eve, mankind, at the top of this beautiful creation world. And he gives them a purpose. He tells them to work underneath him in his world for its good, cultivate it and care for it, to rule over it. But Adam and Eve, they rebel. And God's creation is quickly corrupted because these people have rejected the good and loving authority of God. They've rejected this relationship of the creator king with his smaller kings over his creation. Now they want to be kings themselves. They want to rule themselves. But their authority is destructive. They, they've rejected the good giver of life who gives every good gift, who created all the good things around them. And they and creation are subjected to a curse. The way the Bible talks about it is frustration, that, that right now the things aren't the way they're supposed to be because they are in hostility with their creator. And that hostility with their creator... It trickles down into the normal relationships of life. People who are separated from God destroy each other. And that's what the Bible starts to unfold, is really how sin, rebellion against God, breaks things and breaks people. But God looks at his kingdom that he has created, his creation, and his kings, his rulers, kings and queens of creation, and sets about to redeem them from their own sinfulness and restore them to a right relationship and a right kingdom with him. And so he begins to make promises in the scripture that he is going to send someone who will crush the serpent. The serpent is the one who originally deceived Eve in the garden to rebel against God. Someone who's going to put down evil and its rebellion against God. But also, then we see promises about a sin covering because sin has not just been something external to humans, people rebelling against God because of external forces. It's involved in humans and they are guilty for their sinfulness. So they need a covering and atonement for their sin. God begins to promise a sin covering. But you know, also they just aren't guilty. They, their, their, their brokenness has worked into the fabric of who they are. So that they need, the way I can say it, is a spirit restorer or renewer. And the Bible in the Old Testament begins to promise that even though God created a perfect world and his little kings corrupted that world, God is going to send a sin covering, a serpent crusher, and a spirit renewer or restorer who will make the creation whole again. Who is going to undo what these kings have done. And... And in doing that, bring everything in a right relationship with God. And that's where Jesus Christ comes in. He is a man who lives perfectly under God's authority. He never rebels, never disregards God, never disrespects him in any way. Yet he walks in the midst of this broken creation amongst rebellious humans in a unique way with them as well. He's not in hostility to God, so he's not destroying his fellow man. He's actually loving his fellow man. But Jesus didn't just come as an incredible example of the way things should have been. He lays his life down on the cross. After perfect obedience, he dies in the place of sinful humanity so that sinful people can be made right with God. He became the, 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 he took the punishment of sin in the place 
of sinners so that they could be reconciled with God. Because remember, people who are hostile to God destroy each other. And as Jesus makes people reconciled to God, he also then teaches them to live lovingly towards each other or united with each other. And Jesus is in his people bringing about the restoration of what God intended. Because as Jesus then unfolds the resurrection of his people when he returns, the Bible tells us that all of creation will be freed from the curse it was under. So the, the, the storyline of the Bible really goes like this. Creation, corruption, Christ dying on the cross, and then in the final consummation of all things, Jesus will have completely unraveled the curse that was placed over all of creation and sinful people in creation. He will have brought people back to a right relationship with God. That's how the Bible teaches us the story of God's work in his world, that the Father, God the Father, planned to save his people and his world, that God the Son, Jesus Christ, entered this world, lived perfectly, died sacrificially the way that we should have, and rose victoriously, offering new life and forgiveness by the power of God the Holy Spirit, who is coming into the lives of the people who turn from sin and trust in Jesus, and helping them to walk in a new and living way, and who ultimately will accomplish the resurrection and restoration of all things, so that God's work in his world, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is, is taking the world back to the way it began, restoring the, the kingdom that God had originally intended in his right relationship with his people over his creation. That was broken by Adam and Eve and all human sense, and it has been restored and is being restored, will ultimately be restored by Jesus Christ, his son. So the Bible teaches us the, the story of God's work in his world and the way that we can live for God in his world. Praise the mountain fixed upon it Mount of God's unchanging